Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week we're gonna be building a pretty much invisible winch mount for the old square body pickup truck that takes advantage of some of the free space that's left behind the front bumper and you know before the first cross member on this thing. It's a very clever idea that reinforces the front of the frame of this thing, keeps our winch out of view, and keeps it out of the elements. So it's, a, it's very clever, very clever. So let's get started fabricating one up. No drawings, no plans. We're just gonna do it from scratch actually steel because I don't know what scratch is. We'll be building it from this plate steel and this angle iron. So let's get started doing this. I think it's going to be pretty fun. So you'll have to bear with me a bit here. My voice is a bit harsh and goes in and out. I've been a bit under the weather lately. But the idea with this mount is that we want to take advantage of this open space in the frame here because the front bumper stops about right here. You know, and we've got all this space in here that will easily fit a winch if we can reinforce the frame here to where that it can stand the pressure that a winch would put on it. Now these trucks don't have the thickest frames, 3 16 of an inch, so not all that stiff. So in order to put a winch here, we're gonna have to reinforce this frame and give us a place to, to mount to. So that's the idea. So let's get started making some plates up that will go in here. We're gonna use 3 8 of an inch thick steel on this hot rolled because it's what we have. Quarter inch would probably be sufficient, but you know, <laughs> we've got three eighths, so that's what we're using. Nothing wrong with it. Let's get started fabricating up these plates and uh, we'll, you know, come up with the rest of the design as we go. I've got some thoughts in my head that will work, I think. So here's the basic idea. We want a plate that mounts on the inside of this frame horn here, one that mounts on the inside of the frame horn here, and then a cross member that runs in between the two that we can mount our winch to. Now obviously it'll be a little more complicated than that, but that is the basic idea. So let's get started fabricating up a template that we can use to you know, get our piece of steel flush up against the inside of the frame rail here, and then we'll start you know, working it out of a piece of steel. So I've got an old piece of a creeper here that I'm gonna be using to make my template, and I'm just gonna set it up here, trace around the actual frame and then cut inside of that line and that'll give me a really good starting point anyway it's just the first first draft I guess call it maybe something like that All right we'll cut this out see see how it fits and then uh, you know trim on it from there and keep working it So now that I've got a template that fits in the space that I want to fill with a piece of steel, and I'm, and I'm happy with the way that it fits, I've traced out all of my bolt holes here. Just line those up. But the problem is that there's some rivets here that are protruding and that'll keep our plate from mounting up flush against the inside of the frame here. So what I've done is just took a hammer and I've tapped to transfer through those rivets onto my template. Then I'll punch those out and do a final fit on this. And once I'm happy with it, we'll trace this onto a piece of steel and cut it out. Get a light snow outside. All right, I like that. So let's uh, transfer that onto a piece of steel and cut it out.
So there we go, driver's side reinforcement plate is done. And while you weren't looking, I went ahead and made the one for the passenger side as well. And all I'm gonna do is bolt these in place so I can start uh, mocking everything up. So when I made these plates, I tried to take advantage of all the original bolt holes that were here. And two, the two in the back here connect to the bumper support. This just holds the bumper rigid out on the ends. You can see it on that side as well. So originally, this was held just to the frame with two 7 16 20 bolts. And what we're doing is drilling out the original welded on nuts. We'll tap those to half 13 and replace all that smaller 7 16 hardware with this upgraded half inch hardware. So here's the winch that we're going to be using. It is a Badlands Apex 12,000 pound winch. This came from Harbor Freight. It's got the remote, got the synthetic cable. Pretty nice. Sealed up really well. Elizabeth picked this up for me during the Black Friday sales and gave it to me for Christmas. So that was a very nice and very thoughtful Christmas gift from Elizabeth. She is awesome. So not the best winch that money can buy, but it gets pretty good ratings this thing does. Plus, I mean, for the price, you could buy two of these for what it would cost to get a name brand winch with the same options. So, I'm excited to have this thing. Looks good. Let's get it out of the box because I haven't opened it yet and uh, see the bolt hole pattern, you know, start fabricating up our mount. Looks like it comes with some paperwork, some stickers that we won't use. There's the hook. That's a good looking hook. The remote. Check that out. Well, that's got a pretty good kachunk to it. Looks like it's got a magnet as well. Yeah. There's the uh, fair lead and some of the cables. I don't know what that is. Um, let's uh, get this out of the way and see what the actual winch looks like. Wow, that's pretty impressive, actually. Never seen one of these in person. What is that? Oh, off and on wireless switch. Really nice, heavy rubber cover. There's our cables. And it's pretty heavy duty. There's our... Wow, that's much heavier duty than what I was expecting. But I guess for a 12,000 pound pull capacity, it has to be more cables. Probably mounting hardware. Bracketry. All right, let's get this out of the box. Can I get this out of the box by myself? Yeah, not too bad. All right. Oh man, that, that looks pretty good. So let me tell you why I've decided to put this winch behind the bumper instead of putting it out on front of the truck on a big brush guard bumper. Because that seems like it's pretty popular, right? A lot of people love those big bumpers. They're multi-purpose, right? Keep your truck from getting scratched up. Plus, they kind of look cool. It depends. Trucks are different, and people, different people like different styles. If you don't believe me, take a cruise through Walmart parking lot, and you'll see. You'll see the guys that uh, have their trucks all camouflaged. You'll see the guy who thinks that his half-ton pickup truck is a big rig, right? With the big mud flaps and the, you know, the cab lights. <laughs> And then you'll see the guys who drive around pretty much factory looking trucks. I kind of like the factory looking setup, to be honest. And that's kind of what I'm after here. Uh, nothing wrong with those other ways of doing it. I mean, right, suit yourself. 
I just want this truck to drive like it did when it was new, right? I want it to be nice and tight, not jacked up, you know, 10 inches because I've had those trucks. I've had four inch suspension lifts, four inch body lifts. They're awesome. Big tires, I mean, they look amazing, but they don't drive amazing most of the time. So that's not what I'm after. And I think by putting the winch behind the bumper here, this truck will pretty much maintain its factory look, but it'll be more capable. So plus it'll save me from having to build or fabricate or buy or fabricate, you know, a large bumper, uh, which, you know, like I said, I like the way that these look factory. So I know I sound like a grandpa, but that's my reasoning. So here's a pretty important piece of the truck that I just replaced, and that is both front brake lines. I've got the rear brake line ordered, but the old ones were in really, I mean, scary bad shape, actually. And you ask a lot from these things, right? Every time the suspension moves, they get flexed. Every time you turn the steering wheel, plus they hold back all the line pressure from the master cylinder. And, you know, they keep you from getting <laughs> horribly injured every time you drive the truck by allowing you to stop. So I decided that some new brake lines were in order. There we go, there's the old ones. They were due for replacement, that's for sure. So our bolt hole spacing is 10 inches by four and a half inches, or 4.49. So that's 254 millimeter by 114. So that's pretty good that they gave you that info. Plus there's the fair lead. And I wonder if that's gonna fit where the license plate goes on the front of this truck. Let's see. Is that gonna work? It's gonna fit absolutely perfect and look pretty good if you ask me. And plus, if we wanted to hide this, we can just put an extended license plate cover, one of the fold-up ones like they used to put on the cars that you would put gas in them under the license plate, and we could hide this all together, right? We could just stretch our lead out, hook it to a shackle or something under the truck, and there we go. It would be basically a hidden winch. That's gonna be awesome. So if this winch was a quarter inch wider, we'd have to relieve the frame a bit. It fits absolutely perfect. Now this is gonna to have to go up. That's as high as this little jack goes, at least right there to the top of this frame rail. So our line comes out where it should. So far so good, got the two angles mounted in there and they're just temporarily mounted till I get everything fitted. Then all this unit will get tore down, all the sharp edges will get dressed, you know, it'll get painted. I gotta make the cross member now, the part that our actual winch is gonna mount to. And it's gonna be a piece of 3 8 plate as well. And it looks like if we cut our piece 23 inches long, that should give us just a little clearance on the ends and then we'll put some bolt holes there and we'll be able to mount our winch. Wrong wrench. Is that the right one? Nope. I've got the right one. Every time.
So there we go, there's a top view, a view that you'll never see once the radiator support's on here, but it looks pretty good, right? I haven't dressed any of the edges, and this plate is not even bolted to the angle yet. Probably just do two half 13, you know, grade eight bolts be plenty. I mean, like I said, the winch is only held on by four, three eight 16 or your equivalent metrics. I did not drill the bolt hole pattern for this winch wrong. I just thought it was important that these two bolts get a little extra ventilation down toward the, the nuts there. Now, we'll paint all this up. It'll look good when it's done. But yeah, I think that that turned out just like I envisioned. Can you tell that this truck has a winch on it? No. Other than those cords dangling down there, maybe then that gave it away. But pretty much invisible. And once... You know, the fair leads on here, maybe a fold up or fold down or a fold to the side, who, who knows. License plate to cover that, it'll be basically invisible. And I'd have to say the way that this thing's mounted, you know, it's not going anywhere. The winch is actually held down with four or three eight sixteen 16 bolts. So really too much more than that, you know, it's kind of overkill, which is what we did here. And that's fine. If you're going to beef something up, beef up the mount that your winch is attached to, I guess. So you don't run into any torquing or bending or problems. But seeing as this is all 3 8 plate and angle, no, we're not going to have any problems. So it would probably damage the frame before it damaged the actual mount that the winch is hooked to. So that's awesome. I mean, some people like to display their winch out front, you know, and then some people like to hide their stuff and then be like, oh, you want to be pulled out of a mud hole? Bang! rescued. <laughs> That's stupid. And another thing, I'm glad that we added two extra leafs up front to stiffen this front end up because we've added probably at least a hundred pounds of, you know, hardware right up here on the front of the frame. That's like, you know, small guy standing on your bumper the entire time your truck exists. So those extra leafs will help to balance this truck out a bit. So that's going to work out good, really good. So let me show you what I decided to do in regards to the bumper bolts on this truck. Now what few that were holding the bumpers on this truck are all damaged, corroded, or just beat all to pieces. Now I looked for direct replacements. I just wanted the factory replacements for this thing, you know, make it easy. But I really had a hard time finding these exact bumper bolts. Now these are carbon steel, half 13, with a stainless steel cap smashed over the head to give it that nice shiny appearance. So you know, remember me fighting to get these things off because they were rusted and corroded. 
Well, after searching and searching, I just decided, you know, forget it. I'll go with a standard, you know, carriage bolt. This is 38 or 308 stainless, a little larger on the diameter than the factory one, a little larger radius, don't stick out quite as far as the factory one. But I think in the long run, these will be much better because they won't corrode, they won't lock up and fight a guy when he goes to remove the bumper. Only problem with the ones that I bought here is that they're not polished at all, just a rough forged stainless steel head. So let's put a little shine on that, make them look nice. You know, these were also a lot cheaper. So let's polish these up and see how nice we can make them look. So there's a look at the head of one of these straight out of the bag. They're all like this, a little rough in the center. So in order to get a nice shine on this thing, we're gonna have to get this all down to one even finish. I'm gonna chuck this thing up in my hand drill, take it over to the bench grinder, which I have a gray scotch Bright wheel on, and buff this thing down. Then we'll bring it over to the bench and use a couple more steps to make these things hopefully shine like a, like a new penny, a new nickel maybe. So there's a look at it off the scotch Bright wheel. Just a nice even finish all the way across the head of it. So now let's bring that down to a bit of a shine. So step two, just a piece of gray scotch Bright. This is just an attempt to remove maybe some of the uneven movement marks from the powered scotch Bright wheel on the bench grinder. So we'll just polish this up real quick and then we'll move on to the final step and try to make this thing look like a mirror. Didn't take much. So it's already 10 times better than what we started with. So the final polishing step is some Hapich Simichrome, just in a folded up shop rag there. Just a bit, the size of a pea. Did not take much. And just polish this thing up. Hopefully it'll give us a really nice mirror-like finish. Look how quick we're removing material. Let's see what we got. Oh man, looks so good. Just, just probably two minutes a piece, maybe three. That is well worth the effort. Factory, right? Original appearance, and obviously the polished. Man, it looks nice. Almost looks black. It's so shiny. So fast forward a little bit. I went ahead and, you know, painted this thing up. Got, got it all fastened down. You didn't miss anything, right? Just a quick flat black paint job. And the only reason I did that is just to keep it from rusting because really this thing's going to be completely out of sight. So I think it looks pretty good though, to be honest. And it's really nice to be able to use all of that unused space for something that could be potentially pretty useful. You know, if you got stuck or, you know, somebody else got stuck and you needed to, uh, to pull them out. Or in my case, I'll probably be using this thing to pull logs for firewood. That would be uh, what I think I'll use it most, mostly for anyway. Now, what I didn't mention is that I did change the hardware that the winch come with. Instead of the, uh, the shorter hardware that it come with, I, 
increased the bolt length by about a quarter of an inch, 0.25 inch, because I don't think they quite intended you to mount this thing to such thick plate. And having these extra length bolts gave me a little extra thread engagement on the nuts that uh, are attached to the winch. So let's put a battery on this thing. First, let's talk about the pros and cons that I can see you know, just out of the gate uh, of this thing being mounted in the location that it is versus out on a bumper. Then we'll hook it up to the battery and actually see if it, you know, does what it's supposed to. I hope that it does. I mean, it should. So let's start off with what I believe is the, the positive things to mounting the winch in this location. One, it should take up, you know, unused space in the frame. Two, the winch is completely out of the weather, right? It's not going to get rained on. The sun's not going to be beating on it. It's not going to see a lot of road you know, water or anything, it's just not going to be able to reach it in that location. So it's pretty, pretty shielded. And another thing is that I just think that it looks better. Now, that's just an opinion. You could argue that you want your winch out on front and you think that would look better. But for me, seeing as this is my truck, I think that this will look better in the long run. Now, the downfalls to this are pretty big. And the major one that I see without using this thing at all is that you're going to run in, if you use it a lot, you're going to run into issues where the line binds up, you know, onto the spool and you're going to have to clear that. And it's not going to be easy to do with this winch mounted, you know, under the radiator of this truck. You're going to be laying on your back, you know, pulling on this thing, trying to get it unwound, you know, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a headache. So if you were going to use this winch a lot, you would definitely want your winch mounted out front where you can easily access all the features on it. Because just to turn this thing on, I have to, you know, reach under the truck and fish around, and, you know, find the switch and all that. So there you go. Those are at least the pros and cons that I can see without, you know, you having a lot of time using this thing or actually any. So press and hold the button on the remote. You can also hook a wire to this and just, you know, use it wired. Um, oh, got to turn on the actual winch itself. If I can find the switch. Yeah. Okay. Now in. Well, better lock the spool. You can tell I'm a novice. Oh wow, yeah, it works. That is awesome. It works. Surprise, surprise, a brand new witch. But that's awesome. At least now I know that it does what it's supposed to. So that's pretty much it, really. Simple installation, simple fabrication. Not a lot to this. I think a guy could do this with an angle grinder, cutoff wheel, and a heavy-duty hand drill if he was really uh, you know, driven to, to make one of these. You know, nothing complicated about it. And I, I think if you have one of these trucks, it's just a good spot to mount a winch. I mean, people have been doing this for a very long time. It's not, not some, you know, something that I come up with by any means. But you know, I think it is a good option over mounting a winch on, you know, a big brush guard bumper that you'd have to buy or fabricate. You know, if you want to go incognito or, you know, stealth, I think it's a good option. So not only does it give you a place to mount a winch, but it also acts as a second cross member up here between these two frame horns and stiffens up the front of the truck probably a considerable amount, seeing as that they do flex, because, you know, I showed that when I was doing the steering box, how much these flexed, you know, but... You know, I think it's probably stiff enough now. So I guess that's it. You know, keep your eyes open. I'm kind of discombobulated or out of order. I've been pretty sick lately, just a bit cold, that's all. And uh, 
I have the video coming up soon pulling this motor and it should come out in a day or so. I'm thinking that I, it will. So if you're interested, keep your eyes open. Uh, there'll be a video coming on that because really it should come first before this, but whatever. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Got some really exciting stuff coming up soon. So thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever. So that's it. I'll see you next time. Thank you.